Welcome to Naive Investor. My name is Gustavo Sayani. Today is January 31st, 2019, and this is our episode number 422. Today's company is called GP Investments, or GP Investimentos in Portuguese, uh, a company that I selected randomly from the Brazilian traded uh, uh, stocks. And uh, this is, a, as the name says, it's an investment company. So uh, it has a lot of peculiarities uh, attached to, to this sort of, uh, of company, which we'll talk a little bit about. Uh, and they, the website itself is pretty clear uh, uh, on the companies they are or have been associated in their 26-year history. here. So a few that I can quickly, or any Brazilian really could quickly recognize, would be Telemar, uh, which became Oi uh, 15 years ago, maybe, I don't know. Uh, I think probably before that even. Uh, Gomes de Almeida Fernandes, a construction uh, residential real estate company. Uh, not just residential, but known for that. Very traditional in Brazil. <clears throat> and... Definitely uh, Par Corretores Seguros and Pais Mendonça supermarket chain. That if I know, if I'm, uh, it's not public, I think it, it went bankrupt or, or something of the sort. Uh, yeah, Sema, it's an electrical company from the state of Maranhão. So, I mean, these, these companies uh, have or have had a relevance. So, great. Uh, we do have a history here. We have looked at uh, GP investments to, to s some extent. So if we look in the same order that I typically look at companies uh, in the videos and in outside the videos, we start by looking at like debt to equity, debt relative to earnings. And here's where a certain uh, idiosyncratic uh, aspects of investment company accounting comes into play because this company can be seen as a vehicle for other companies for owning other companies uh, so it's you should at least in theory demand uh, a much lower debt to equity because if this company is getting debt so it's getting paid in advance by their Investors, so the people who who hire GP Investments and, and, and buy shares in their funds. So this is a, the kind of company that gets paid in advance. I think this is the point here. So if if you get paid in advance, this could already be considered a loan, even though uh, it does not show as such in the accounting. And if you take loans on top of that. Accounting wise, and they show here uh, that's you know uh, exponentially more dangerous because you will be taking loans probably to invest in companies that already take loans. So, you know, in practice, this is highly dangerous if the market goes south. You know, uh, any variation therein could lead to trouble. <clears throat> that's not the case for JP Investments, there they were showing uh, no debt whatsoever here. <clears throat> the same logic for liabilities to equity kind of applies for investment companies as well. So think of a company such as GP Investimentos. The company itself uh, typically will not have a large headcount. So you don't need you know, 10,000 people to decide where to invest. In fact, one may be enough, to be quite honest with you. Uh, <clears throat> So you will have a, a low headcount. You don't need expensive machinery. Uh, you really don't. Okay, forget about robots and stuff. Uh, you don't need, you know, a plant like a steel mill level plant. So the liabilities should be really low, relative, even relative to the equity, which doesn't uh, reflect the actual equity sometimes because of accounting. Uh, peculiarities uh, inherent to investment companies. But in GP Investments case, both things look fine. Here we're seeing a current ratio that's incredibly high, you know, 
probably among the highest uh, in in the stock ex in Brazilian stock exchange, and they may simply be holding cash to deploy. Same thing, you know. What is their short term, their current liabilities? Probably paying paying employees, paying, paying rent in the office, this kind of thing. And they have a lot of money here, probably to deploy. We'll see if it has been deployed. <coughs> So here, nothing, you know, nothing that would tell us, okay, forget about this company. When we come to earnings, then the situation uh, changes for GP Investimentos. So they have had over the last 10 years that I uh, got information here, they have lost money to the tune of almost 300 million per year on average. So the analysis, uh, I mean, the analysis can continue, but the the desire to become their partner, at least for me, ended here. So much so that I didn't go very deep into the free cash flow here. And granted, the free cash flow picture might be the opposite, might be very bright, and this could be uh, interesting to consider. So before we even think about the free cash flow, let's just update the numbers for 2018. <clears throat> yeah, so I don't think we have the full year financial statement quite yet here. They just started being uh, published by companies. So we'll make do with the first three quarters. We should uh, keep in mind that the fourth quarter for for equities in Brazil was by far the best of last year. After the election, there was like a wave of, let's put it this way, uh, optimism, like bullishness. <clears throat> so consolidated, this one is kind of, requires a lot of scrolling. Okay, consolidated, so passivo is liabilities, and this is where we'll find the net equity. So. After the third quarter of 2018, it was a $2,749,000. Now we can grab the, the liability, so we'll add current to non-current liability. So 667, now let me just draw the calculator. It's hard for me to talk in English. And make these additions <clears throat> plus six six so seven thirty three as you can see liability is quite stable here so after just information you could say it's even down debt if any Didn't see any debt here. Cool, so the fundamental numbers here are the best they've been over the last three years, say. Onwards to current ratios, so it's um, Current assets, 671. Divided by current liabilities. So it's 10.16. Okay, as you, as you can see, it's, it's been going down, uh, which in isolation, I think it's a good thing in this case because it was really high, but not a strong, you know, improvement indication here. All right, so here we have a very interesting situation wherein they are posting negative revenue. So this is quite rare. Okay, whatever that means. Uh, 
224. So we will simply project here. So minus 298. Uh, yeah, so I think revenue, a negative revenue here would mean, uh, uh, and I could be wrong here, and if you know better, uh, please uh, leave a comment in the video. But since it's an investment company, so they, they, will, they have, have had withdrawals from the fund, so they have had to return money to, to, to their investors. Earnings. Minus 363. And we extrapolate into another quarter. So minus 484. Now we should really be, you know, not trust these numbers so much because, of four, again, the fourth quarter uh, was was a, a quarter where the stock exchange went up by a lot. So let's just keep that in mind. Oh yeah, free free cash flow. And again, for this kind of company, free cash flow, you know, it's a little different, but still worthwhile to look at. So operating cash flow minus one thirty. Three plus investment cash flow minus 418. So this will be so we're talking about 735 million negative free cash flow. So super tough situation here for JP Investments. I would I would not invest in JP Investments. Uh, even if it was like a market cap of zero, I would be, uh, I would think twice because there's not much of an indication. Knowing what I know, okay, let me really qualify this. Uh, there's not much, anything good happening here. Uh, Yeah, well, they do have a net equity of, of 20, 20, 2,800 uh, million dollars. So they theoretically could withstand another three years with this kind of free cash flow until they're, they go to zero. So if we, if you consider that the market cap was 655, and you do like, you know, you make the math there. There could be some value here, of course. So let's see what's the market cap right now. This is very important. GP Investimentos Market Cap. So here it's saying 33. All right, so it's saying 513. And as you can see, uh, the numbers are not looking so good, but we still have to update the average here to reflect th this year of 2018.
computer's very slow. Uh, this is a very new computer. I bought it six, seven months ago. But yeah, and, you know, this is really, you know, quantum computing here, I suppose. So these are the averages, but it does updating the average here did nothing to change my my perception. So at this price, it could be uh, GP investments could be a, a cigar butt, but you would have to be extremely confident in their ability to turn around a set of years, eleven years, that have been frankly very tough for them. So it's ten years. And this puts the GP investments for me, with my level of understanding and ability, uh, in the no box. So this means next episode, we'll come back and look at a different company. Simple as that. So if you're still here, thank you very much. And if you're still here and you're not a subscriber yet, please consider becoming one by clicking or tapping on the subscribe button. It's typically red. Uh, look for the red button. Um, meanwhile, I invite you to watch our past episodes. We do have 421 more. I invite you to watch our future episodes. Uh, and as always, if you have questions, suggestions, criticism, and especially if you spot mistakes in the analysis, because they do happen with alarming frequency, please leave a comment in the video and I'll be happy to write you back as soon as I can. Uh, I wish you a beautiful day. Hope to see you soon.